Today I will show you how in just a few steps you can configure a SIMATIC S7300 telecontrol station with the DNP3 telecontrol protocol, connect its basic functions such as alarm and command transmission to a control system and start it up. The project is already available. It consists of a process station with DNP3 address 10 and a control system with DNP3 address 1. The binary values imported from the digital input are transmitted to the master as messages, as binary inputs object 2. An analog value is gathered with the analog input module and transmitted to the master as DNP3 object 32. Finally, a command is received from the master and output to the RTU directly to the digital output. This command is a binary output object 12. The project has already been created in step 7. I insert another station as the control center. I assign it the name DNP3 master. As the telecontrol station, we insert an S7300 with the name RTU10. We now configure our RTU in hardware config according to our hardware setup. An S7 standard mounting rail, a CPU 312C, a DNP3 TIM module, the digital input output module of our simulation module, and the analog input module. In NetPro, I configure an industrial Ethernet and provide the control center with an industrial Ethernet connection. I assign the IP address according to the task and connect the control center with the Ethernet. The TIM module is also connected with the Ethernet network and the IP address modified according to the task. In the TIM object properties, we configure the time synchronization on the time tab. The time synchronization interval is the interval at which the control center sends the time to the station. For example, here we configure a time synchronization of 2 hours. Additional DNP3 parameters are available on the Interfaces tab. However, they can normally be used with the default settings. The project is now compiled in NetPro and we can already switch to the CNOT SC7 engineering tool to continue configuring the connection and the data points. First, I open the connection configuration to establish the communications relationship between the substation and the control center. I do this by copying the connection from the available connections to the configured connections. Finally, we save this and switch to station administration. There, we assign the DNP3 addresses of the partners. A DNP3 address is the individual address that a communications partner of the telecontrol project uses to exchange its process information, for example, process values such as pressure, temperature, alarms or status information. I assign the addresses as specified in our example. The master is assigned DNP3 address 1 and the station DNP3 address 10. The default address should be kept for the TIM. If I were to compile and load the project now, the RTU could already communicate with the master, but without exchanging process information. First of all, we set the DNP3 conformity level. We select level 5 to ensure that we can use the greatest possible range of functions with respect to data buffering and timestamp. Finally, we begin configuring the data point objects by selecting the TIM and opening the TD7 on TIM library. It is recommended that you set up the partner status as basic setting. The partner status indicates the connection status between RTU and master. To display the status information on the CPU, here we select, for example, output byte 124. Using this byte, the CPU can now monitor whether the connection to the master is OK or faulty. We want to transmit messages and analog values and receive commands. For this purpose, we select the three blocks BIN 04, ANA 04 and COMMAND 01. As evident from the online help, the BIN 04 block corresponds to DNP3 object group 1 or 2 and the ANA 04 block to object group 30 or 32. 
We close the library and start the detailed configuration of the data point objects. First, we activate the first of four channels of the message block and specify the source address from which the message or alarm will originate. In our example here, it is input byte 4 of our simulation module. Now we specify the destination station for our message, in our case the master at dnp3 address 1. Since we would like to transmit the message, including the timestamp, we specify event class 1, which means the message will be event driven and transmitted together with the timestamp to the dnp3 master. All values of class 1, 2 or 3 are called events and are transmitted both with the timestamp and with buffering. As a result, such values will not be lost in a case of a communications failure. Since we have parameterized the first DNP3 object of the binary input type, we can keep the index addresses with the default value 0. Selecting a fast read cycle ensures that the values from the CPU will be applied immediately. Next, I set the parameters of the data object for transmitting the analog value. The analog value is read directly from the analog input module and converted to a physical measured value of type integer in the CPU. For the analog value, the first channel must also be activated and we specify the address where the CPU has stored the converted analog value. Because an analog value can usually change dynamically, we assign a threshold value check to it. This prevents the value from being continually transmitted but only when it changes, by for example 1% of the valid measurement range. Since our analog values move in a range from 0 to 1000, a threshold value of tens equals exactly 1%. Here as well, we specify a destination station, the master with the DNP3 address 1. Since we want to transmit the analog value with the timestamp and store it in the archive on the control system, we assign it to event class 1. Here too, we are dealing with the first DNP3 analog input object and so we can keep the index address with the default value 0. A normal acquisition cycle is sufficient for gathering the analog values. Last, we set the parameters of the receive block for commands. To do so, I activate another channel and specify the destination address on the CPU to which the command is to be output. Here, for example, directly to the digital output, output byte 4. Here as well, we specify the partner, thus the command source and the DNP3 index for digital output objects. This completes the configuration and the project can be compiled and loaded. For loading the configuration, the programming device is connected with the DNP3 TIM. I assign the IP address to the TIM module using the PST tool. Next, I first load the CPU and then the TIM module. The TIM module performs a restart to apply the configuration data. In the DNP3 master, in our case the WinCC SCADA system, the station is already configured. Once the RDU has started up, its status indicator displays the connection status. The RTU status switches from not available to available. Now we will generate an alarm via the simulation module. It is displayed immediately in the WinCC message system together with the timestamp. A measured value or analog value from the CPU is automatically transmitted to the SCADA master. The analog value is displayed in a picture variable and stored in the measured value archive. In the control system we now give a command to the RTU, which is immediately displayed on the parameterized output of the simulation module. As you can see, in just a few minutes we have configured a DNP3 RTU and its basic functions and started it up.